Hey guys, how's it going? Kapan here. I have a pretty special treat for you guys today. We're gonna go over Crip's first arena ever. We're talking like over a year ago when I had absolutely no idea how to play the game or how really anything worked. I mean, you know, lethal wasn't even a term back then. You know, it's it's crazy when you think about it, but it'll really show you guys, you know, how things have evolved and how maybe new players think about the game because a lot of people they don't you know they don't surf right they don't watch the streams they don't do the research before they get into the midst of it you know they they just play so what does that look like what does it look like when crip just plays well, let's have a look so here we are the decision making you got the warrior the priest and the druid back then a lot of cards were different including twilight drake and as this will happen Probably Warrior was maybe a bit stronger than Druid, but it was close. Sun for your Protector used to give taunt to all of your minions. Twilight Drake used to be buffed by its attack and toughness based on the many cards you have in your hand. You know, just a quick speed up to the draft here because, yes, I took a long time. Picking big creatures is, you know, kind of a big deal. There I was thinking about Tarn Warrior just because it's such a cool card, but it turns out Drew the Claw is obviously a lot better. This is a pretty big decision between Worgen Infiltrator and Direwolf Alpha, but as it so happened, the Dalaran made in Druid was probably the most OP card back then out of the three. With cards like Twilight Drake, uh, Spellbreaker actually was one of the strongest cards back then. And of course, the big creatures were always good, but you know, new players are often uh, fended away from the drawbacks of cards. But uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta go with the Starfire. I think I just picked a Wind Fury card there. That was pretty sad. Um, here we obviously know the absolute best card is the Boulder Fist Ogre, but to a new player, it's pretty difficult to really understand that cards that just have good stats are good, uh, because you don't really know what good is, so you don't usually pick them, and that's why that didn't get picked, and that's why here we're probably not going to see the Tiger get picked. Oh no, the mouse is over, oh, whoa, what was that? Soul of the Forest? That uh, card is okay, I guess. Here, uh, obviously Drake. Drake was like the sickest card back then. You know, you, Drake at the start, Drake in the middle, let's go Drake. If you don't want Drake, if you want to slow it up, you go the Nourish, go the Nourish, all right, it's fine, all those three options are pretty good. Um, Claw was a little bit better than it was, uh, a little bit better back then than it is now because of synergy with Savagery. Savagery would do the damage to all the creatures rather than just one, so that synergistic property, plus it's a really good card in the start of the game. Claw happened to be the right pick, but you guys have to keep in mind, this draft, I had never played Druid before ever. This is my first Druid game ever. I had no idea how to do anything. Fortunately, I picked the Druid of the Claw there. Uh, Innervate is a deceptive card. It makes people uh, think it's like really good. Sometimes it turns out really well in Arena, but these days it's still questionable. Back then it was certainly bad because it was a slow game and it was much more value-oriented and Innervate didn't really deliver that, but all right. Uh, picking pretty well here, actually. I'm, I'm just looking back for the first time myself and, and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's not as catastrophic as I had anticipated it to be. Here, uh, Raid Leader and Mark of the Wild are pretty similar in strength because a lot of the really crazy creatures were ones that were silenceable. Silence was dominant back then, so Mark of the Wild was a little bit worse. Once with the game being a little bit slower, you don't really get that tempo very frequently. And because, you know, you usually get counter the turn after with the silence. So while Mark of the Wild may not be quite as quite as good back then, I think it's still the pick here. But I, I'm looking at that core hand like, man, I, I like big creatures and I attack. Thinking with Mark of the Wilder. That's a good decision. Good decision. Raid Leader would have been pretty good as well. Here, uh, I, I noticed that early on, especially just reviewing my own play, um, I really liked taunts. I overvalued taunts pretty highly. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you kind of see that throughout the picks that I picked the taunt cards, that I picked the taunt activators. Um, yeah, it turns out Taunt is good, but it's not really that good, especially in the meta where everything is super slow. Two cards here both got nerfed. Pine Size Summoner used to drop the cost of minions by two. That card was so broken, and Starfall used to be able to target your opponent's face, which didn't really make much of a difference in Arena, but in Constructed it was huge. There, I think the Pine Size Summoner was by far the best pick, however. Here, Harvest Golem, good as always, good stuff. Uh, Senjin is a great pick here, easy pick. You know, popping them up quick. Um, here the Loot Hoarder is pretty good, but you have to keep in mind because the game was slow and because people like the one damage hero power, um, Loot Hoarder often fell to just about everything. Um, 
I think I'd still pick it though, but I went with a Harpy. Of course, it's got Wind Fury. Yeah, you can attack twice. Oh, pick the swipe. Not bad. Another Druid. This is actually a pretty sick draft. Um, I think here Beast of Sergeant is really good, but uh, because there's so many big creatures, Healing Touch might be pretty decent as well. But uh, good. Abusive. That is correct. Uh, what do we got here? Mark of Nature, Soul of the Forest. Well, I picked the first Soul of the Forest. Fortunately, I didn't pick the second. As the final card, we have another Starfall, and we have the Savagery, which we can synergize a little bit with the Claw, but still not really that great. Uh, so Starfall does end up being the pick there. Going to the first game, a lot of stuff is sped up. There's no sound because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the background. If you guys want to watch the full thing, you guys are welcome to. There's a link in the description below. Right now, it's just me talking about basically how bad I am. So then I'm checking out the hero powers like, wow, that's the druid hero power. That seems pretty good. So here, what do you do? What do you do? It was really important back then to kind of get some stuff on the board, uh, much like it is now, but it just didn't really dictate the uh, the winner of the game as much as it does these days. So popping up the doggy is pretty good, though. I'd, I'd say that any play that involves coining out two drop and then the follow-up play is either reactive or nothing, then that's generally a pretty bad situation. So here I'm checking out the claw. Two damage to face. Hmm. Abusive. Wow. How do I saturate this mana? Well, I want to abusive my claw. Oh, what? Well, that would have been pretty good. If I could abusive my claw and then cast claw and then kill the 2-3. Oh, man. So here I'm thinking, yeah, whatever, man. Look, if, if I hit him for 4 to face, I'm winning the game, right? I mean, look at me. I'm at 32. This priest, he's at 24. Good luck, good luck beating me, right? So obviously here, the play is for the priest to kill the dire doggy and then to heal his 2-3 creature, but instead he decides to play a Wisp, uh, which is, uh, I guess, a card, um, and to play his own Wind Fury creature, because again, we just discussed how ridiculously overpowered Wind Fury is. So here we go with a, with a hero power. Uh, pretty, pretty proud of this play. I mean, think about it, you know, doing one damage and killing a creature with your hero power Turns out to be a pretty pretty big deal. So what do we do here? What do we do here? The 2-1, well, you don't really want to run that into the 1-1. One, one. You don't really want, want to run that into the 2-3. Uh, innervating out the uh, Mark of Nature is actually pretty decent, but you'd still kind of get countered because the Wisp and the Thrall Mark can kill it and you'd only lose the Wisp. But of course, we're not really thinking on that level in the game. Fairy Dragons, as strong as ever, 3-2 can't be targeted, but North Shark, kind of a piece of crap. I actually forgot this card got nerfed there. 2 mana, 1-3, but knowing that you had the North Shark and 4 mana, it'd probably be a better idea to play it, kill off the 2-1, and then heal up your Wind Fury creature, because then you'd dominate value, you'd still have the board, but of course you don't really want to do that because you don't really know what's going on, just like me. I don't really know what's going on. But, okay, I killed the North Shark Cleric. That's fine, I suppose. So now we have a hero power. What do you do with a hero power? We kill a Wisp. Oh, man. Getting good already. Yeah, turns out it's pretty easy to understand uh, value in Hearthstone. If you can kill it for free, it's good. So the opponent draws a crazed alchemist, um, which I don't really know if it serves much of a benefit here. Um, I'm looking at this card, I'm like, wow, that card is pretty interesting. That's a rare, obviously. I've never seen this card before playing Hearthstone. And, of course, to follow up your Crazy Alchemist play, it's always good to play Questing Adventure, because who needs 1-1 one, one buffs, right? Well, the priest here decides to attack the taunt creature, uh, because he couldn't attack face as he so desperately tried earlier. After attacking once, the taunt creature is still alive, unfortunately, so we didn't really plan that turn out too well, which is something that basically all new players do to an extreme degree. It's quite obvious that my opponent was also a fairly new player. Here I realized that, you know, I need to play one of these six drop creatures just because I don't do anything if I don't innervate one out. So which one do I want to get out? Do I want the Lord of the Arena or do I want the Harpy? Well, I don't know. I don't really think it matters too much here. I'd be pretty upset that I'm losing the game normally, but uh, back then you guys have to understand that I didn't even realize that I was playing against someone who wasn't playing well at all either. So that's that's kind of important. So here he does some pretty pretty decent trades, but uh, you know, healing first and then 
and then passing, that's a little bit suspicious, I would say. But again, to be suspicious, you kind of have to know the cards, not know the cards. Oh man, it's a top deck. That's a top deck. That's, that's Crip's first top deck, boys. Look at that. Oh man, Wrath and the creature. And this creature's got Wind Fury, and I got Mark of Nature, and oh man, things are gonna be happening pretty soon here. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of working out the combos in my mind. My opponent's playing a War Golem, which is eh, about as good as a card now as was back then, which is half decent in Arena. So the options here is to Starfire, uh, the creature, or to Mark the Wild, the creature. Uh, and trade into it, or to mark, uh, sorry, mark of nature and go face. So of course we we decide to go face. You guys understand when you first play the game, you don't have the general concepts down. You don't have the general concepts of you know uh, a clock and how soon I can lethal him. You don't have the general concepts of you know trading. You don't really know how the game plays out in order to lead to a win. So here, uh, the priest opponent does realize that if he doesn't kill a creature, he's going to lose. So he's going to trade. So if he does the trade, so he's in a pretty good spot because at nine life, my five damage starfall to the face, which at this time actually worked, well, don't have lethal. So right now I'm actually losing. So I have the Gurubashi top deck, not a great one. Uh, turns out the Worgen just trades for the Gurubashi, but there has to be some clever thought process in that. The Worgen actually has to attack twice into the same creature, activating an enraged Wind Fury, which is probably beyond the comprehension of anyone who started playing the game on this day, including myself. I wasn't really worried about it. And, uh, you know, that's basically proven by some of the cards being played out here with Secret Keeper in a pre-stack. Yeah, not so good as it turns out. And here we have it. Oh, it's another top deck. It's the Stormwind Champion. That is pretty disgusting. But uh, instead of that, I thought playing Druid for the first time right after playing Mage, that I might be able to attack my own creature. I mean, why wouldn't you? You're a Druid. You can bite your friends. I mean, that seems logical. If you can Fire Blast your friends, why can't you bite your friends? So, okay, so I guess we don't have lethal with the biting my friend into Starfall face, which... I don't think was even in my mind at the time, but I, I thought, you know, that would be a pretty cool play. So instead, we just went for the super cool play, which I'm quite proud of, of buffing the creature of the Stormwind Champion. My opponent has the mind control. Unfortunately for him, he mind controlled the wrong creature because, well, a 5-5 that doesn't actually do anything is significantly worse than a 6-6. Yeah, significantly worse. In fact, you actually lose the game. Because if he had taken the Stormwind, he could have killed my creature. But now they took the creature, he can't kill the Stormwind, so Crip wins! Good stuff. Yes! I got lucky as fuck. That's very realistic. Holy shit, that's a lot of experience. 